Is four pens too many to carry in your pocket at one time? Maybe. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to Thankful Thursday. It's December 17th. And before I get into what I'm thankful for, let's talk about what's going on in the stew house. So, I worked from home today. Uh, which evidently gave me a lot of gas. So still both Michelle and Logan are really sick, or at least they were this morning. And I was needed here uh, to help take care of Logan, to help kind of keep him occupied so Michelle could just stay in bed. But I needed to get a lot of work done. And so I actually ended up driving all the way to work, grabbing my laptop from there, bringing it home. Because I don't have the home access thing set up quite right yet so that I can do all my emails from home. Gotta work on that. But it actually went surprisingly well, considering the fact that Logan doesn't usually sit still for a very long time. He gets bored very easily and gets kind of antsy. But when I was working at the kitchen table with my laptop up, Logan just wanted to sit next to me on his chair with his iPad in front of him. And so it made him look, he acted like he was working. So it was like me working and him working, and it was pretty adorable. And if you don't believe me, look at this. See? All the feels. So... In an effort to make both Michelle and Logan feel better, uh, she's been looking online and talking to other people in daycare forums and mommy forums and stuff like that about this stomach flu that's been going around and ended up getting some recommendations for this stuff called Emetrol. Never even heard of it before, but some people, I guess, swear by it. So, uh, we gave some of that to Logan today. Michelle herself took some as well. We'll see how it goes. I and mean, right now, anything that helps is, is useful because it's gnarly. So I still haven't watched the GOP debate from a couple nights ago. I've got the videos all set up to go. So I gotta watch, take my notes, and then read all the articles. And I will have that all done and shot and posted for Sunday's episode of The Motley Stew Show. But so far, I've heard some interesting things. I've heard some stuff about a Cruz Rubio showdown, which we all know was gonna happen anyway. And then, of course, people attacking Donald Trump. I don't know how much of that was going on versus the fact that Donald Trump seemed to have stumbled on an incredibly easy answer, proving again... He doesn't really know what he's talking about. He's leading in the polls purely on bravado and machismo, but not on actual experience or knowledge or preparedness for the job of being president. But I'll get into that later. So since I didn't receive any messages today on my YouTube account, I guess I didn't win the gift from Casey Neistat's giveaway. What are you gonna do? It's worth a shot. Yeah, and then of course everyone's freaking out about Star Wars. Now of course I'm interested in going to see it, and I will see it at some point, but I'm not that crazed about it to go like opening night. I definitely feel better about the possibility of this movie being good compared to the last three movies that came out. But I'll wait for it to die down a little, or maybe I'll see it on the weekend. If I'm going by myself, finding one ticket in the showing is going to be pretty easy. I need to shave. Eh, not a lot else going on. Michelle and I watched another episode of Broadchurch tonight, season two. Damn, that show is good. It's so good that it's kind of like you, you forget that you want to get other stuff done. You forget that you need to go to sleep. You forget that there's other stuff in the world going on. You're just like, next episode, next episode, next episode. Until it's done, and when it's done, you just feel like, what just happened? But, you know, when you got two kids, you can't let yourself go that much. So, we'll get there in time. So on to this week's Thankful Thursday, which is actually the Thankful Thursday topic that I was going to use for last week and didn't end up posting. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had the terrible tragedy and the attacks in San Bernardino. And then just a little bit later, we had these amazing comments from Donald Trump saying that he thought we need to ban all Muslims from coming into the country, at least temporarily. But he was including all Muslim Americans, people who were actually born here, who might have traveled out of the country, they needed to be banned from coming back to their homes. Because we couldn't verify who was a terrorist and who was not because of their religion. Now that presents a problem. And like many people have said, that is actually the biggest push for people joining up with ISIS and with terrorist groups that anyone could possibly give is to prove that we are as bigoted and racist and hate-filled as ISIS and these terrorist groups paint us to be. So the thing that I'm thankful for is people who are working on different avenues of trying to rectify this issue that isn't just military. Not saying military is not an option and that it shouldn't be used, but you gotta go on more than just one front. Because like I said, this isn't something that you can destroy with a missile or a bullet. This is an idea, so you have to try to eradicate the idea. And one of the best ways to do that is through education. Because you're talking about an area in the world where there's very little education going on, especially in the rural areas, and even more so, even less education going on for girls. And studies have shown time and time again that the more you educate the women in a certain society, in a group, in a village, in a city, in a state, the higher the educational percentage of the women, the more women that are in the workforce, the better that area does. So, 
in comes people like Greg Mortensen. Now he's written two books, this being one of them, Stones into Schools. He also wrote a book before this called Three Cups of Tea. And what he talks about is going into Afghanistan and Pakistan and working with a group that he helped create called the Central Asia Institute to help build schools in the most local and remote and hard to reach areas. And then the promise that he makes the elders and the leaders of those areas give is that if his group comes in and builds that school, they have to fill that school at least half with girls. Now, if people have heard about this group before and maybe you've heard a little bit of a scandal, there was a bit of an issue a few years back with Greg Mortensen and people were criticizing the fact that, that the Central Asia Institute was spending a lot of money on his book tours and promoting the book more so than they were using to build the schools. And of course, that can be debated about why that would be, because the more people that read those books, the more donations you might get. So you have to spend that money to receive more donations. But still, the issue was resolved. Greg actually paid a bunch of money back to the Institute and he removed himself from the board. Now that that's been done, Charity Navigator, which is a great place to look about how valued and how well run a charity is, now rates the Central Asia Institute at four stars. So whatever scandal might have been in their past, they have fixed it, and this is a great company, this is a great organization to support. Because like I said, you have to go with things at least two fronts, if not more fronts than that. Military, education, social, regional, religious, all these things need to be looked into if you're going to solve a problem like this kind of extremism. So that's what I'm thankful for. If you haven't read those books, you should read both of them. I do have both of them, but surprisingly, I've only read Stones Into School. I haven't read Three Cups of Tea yet. And that's my video for today. Hope you guys have an awesome Thursday. Stay tuned for tomorrow, and as always, be good to each other.